Hi, my name is Fatima, mother to two beautiful kids, parent consultant and founder of Evolve Ed. I think one of the points that the parent can um, keep in mind is uh, that the child learns to identify how he or she feels. Um, I've seen a lot of parents, they, they tell the child things that possibly goes against that. For example, child is given a hot cup of milk and the mom says, drink the milk. And the child says, no, it's hot. The mom said, no, it's not hot, it's cold, drink it. Or possibly when the weather is, is okay for the child, the child is, is comfortable with that weather and the mother says, no, wear your sweater, it's cold outside. Or possibly an uncle who comes in and shakes the hand or tries to give him a hug and the mom or the dad says, He's just uncle, give him a hug, give him a little, you know, kiss on the cheek. So some way the child is feeling uncomfortable. Um, is intuitively, body is intuitively telling him that I need to be away. Some way when we say things, we respond to things in that manner, the child feels that no, I cannot listen to myself. I don't know, I actually don't know whether it's hot, the milk is actually hot, or the weather is cold, I really don't know. And it goes again for it goes against them protecting themselves it's very important that the parent teaches the child to respect and it's very important for you to respect your child's feelings so next time when the child says the milk is hot probably you can respond saying you'd like to wait for some time if you respond that manner the child understands that knows and understands that you trust him extremely important I think as a parent, keep reinforcing your relationship and keep telling the child, feel, get the child to feel, the child feels that yes, my mom or my dad trusts me, that I'm there and you're there for him no matter what situation that he or she is. Keep reinforcing that, keep telling him that because every time you say that, it's building that relationship, that, that trust and he will come and report any such things that probably makes him uncomfortable. I think the best way to answer that question is if the child is uncomfortable, if you are uncomfortable, then the actual the answer is no. That's the best way to do that. If you feel that the child is getting a little uncomfortable sitting, then, then don't, don't, don't allow that to happen. Say it's okay. Probably you can also use the opportunity to talk to your children about the uncomfortable uh, touches. Like for example, you can talk to your child about when mama hugs you, how does that make you feel? It makes you feel happy. If daddy hugs you, then how do you feel? But probably if that uncle gets you on the lap and hugs you, then how would that feel? So probably you can get the child to understand that not everybody and the way when they hug is gonna make you feel that same way. So it's very important that if the child is feel loved, and in the same way, in a manner that when a mum hugs the child, if that's the point that you would want to put across, the good opportunity for you to talk about it. So use this opportunity to, to talk to your children about being safe. To be honest, there's no defined age. There's no age that we can say that that's when you can start talking about, um, let's say, child abuse. It needs to be started at a very fundamental fundamental level. Possibly at, a, at the time when you're talking to your child about the nose and the eyes and the hair, when you're introducing your child about the bodies, do introduce them about their private parts as well. It starts as from them. Many parents ask me, what is the best age that I can talk and when should I start talking to my child? But I say is just, just casually put it across because a lot of times you can't make the child to sit and say, I'm going to talk about your bodies today. It doesn't happen that way. It, it comes, it needs to be, it needs to be possibly um, introduced in a very casual and in a normal way. One of the, diff one of the best ways also, best time to talk to your children is uh, probably when you're bathing the child. And that's when you can talk to them about, about uh, the bodies and the private parts and how to keep it clean and how to keep it safe and possibly uh, just like the way you talk about fire safety, traffic safety, walking on the roads, you know, that's when you talk about people touches as well. It just reminds me of a story about this uh, maid um, who entered the house of an old woman. 
uh, she was a very old lady, maybe about 70, 75 years old. She entered the house and she was very nice to that old lady and she was, she was, she was repeatedly telling that old woman that I'm there for you because the old lady didn't have anybody. She, built, she stayed with that old lady, serving her, giving her all that love, giving her all that attention, somewhere connecting to her so that her loneliness is something that is, it fades away and which, which really happened. And uh, the old lady starts to trust the maid, trust her not only with uh, the money, her day-to-day -day activities, but probably even the keys to her drawer. But what she didn't know is that the maid was not interested in the woman, that old lady, but she was interested in possibly the jewelry in, your, in her cupboard. That's how the abusers actually function. They build that relationship. They build that, that trust in your child. They build that, that, that sense of that I am for you, filling that void. If a child lacks that void of self, self-worth, they actually allow or they actually fulfill that. If the child lacks love and attention, they actually give him that. If the child they feel that lacks um, companionship, they actually give them that. They are people who are studying your child, possibly studying your family, giving the child what they need and then somewhere connecting, somewhere engaging with that child on a day-to-day -day basis so that they can come closer to the child. The reason why they do that is to build, like I said, to build trust and to somewhere remove and that defense of the child so that somewhere they can allow the child to get into a sexual act. And this process is extremely dangerous and it's something which is called grooming. They groom the child so that somewhere they can get the child to do what they want. And this is something that we need to be very, very careful about.